We're going to develop G-code for manufacturing this hemisphere using Creo 2.0. We've already drawn the shape, so we can make a new manufacturing. And we need to first, we're going to work left to right across this, so the first thing is to select a reference model. That's that shape that we had drawn. It doesn't really matter where we put it. Um, first thing is to think about where your coordinate system is relative to your machine. Uh, that's going to give you your zero when you actually go to manufacture it in your CNC. So I don't really want the origin of this to be sitting in the middle of this part, so I'd like it to be sitting on the top corner. So we'll make a new coordinate system. I'll make it relative to an existing one. Um, we're going to do an offset here. important for a mill that your z-axis be up, so our z-axis is up. Now again, working left to right, the next thing is, is create a work center. There's not a whole lot to do here, just tell it we're going to use a mill. Uh, and then we're going to select an operation here, it's going to ask us what, or, what coordinate system we're going to use, we're going to select that one, the one that we just made, okay, and it highlights it green. Alright, now we can go to the mill tab. The first step in making this is going to be a volume rough, we can either then finish, we can follow that up with a surface milling or a trajectory milling. So the first step again is our volume rough. We are going to set up a tool, we're going to set up the parameters, we'll set up a retract surface, and we'll set up the volume, which is the material that's going to be removed. First thing is to set up a tool. So sort of some of this is more important than others. Um, I'm using millimeters here. I've set my default units to be millimeters. And we'll use maybe an eight, eight mil ball end mill. Apply. Okay. Next thing is some parameters. This is what's going to come up in your G code is your feed rate. Um, you know, depending on the material you're using in the machine and all that, you need to think about this. Step depth is in each level how far it goes down. If you're cutting metals, you know, you're talking millimeters. If it's plastics and MDF, it could be more. Uh, step over. So with an eight mil bit we might have depending on the material again it might be three mils overlap depending on how fast you want to go it might be five um, proof stock allow is how much distance you want to give yourself without touching the actual part and since we're going to follow it up later with a with a finish cut we can leave ourselves a little bit here and again we're just going to do a rough cut so i can leave a little more work for my for my um uh proof cut um, and then we can do the same thing with the bottom, with the bottom surface. We have a separate control over how much to leave on the bottom surface. Um, we've got different types of cuts. You can see you've got spirals and different types of cuts. Uh, you can select to do a rough and a proof, or a rough only. A proof is going to do uh, the perimeter. It's a perimeter cleanup. If you just want to, since we're going to follow later with a surface mill, we can just do a rough only here. Um, rough only. We have to put in a number here, I'm not exactly sure what that one is, and we have to put in the spindle speed. And again, that uh, is going to come up in your G-code, and depending on the machine you're using, uh, you can adjust that later easily, or e if you don't have control of it. Okay, so we'll OK that. It's now asking us to define a retract surface. You can do this earlier, or you can do it now. It's pretty easy just to put in a retract surface here. So this is where the tool will get pulled back to when it's moving around. Okay, um, so that's it. Now that it asks us sort of we're wondering where to go here. We've got this nice little mill volume selected there. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create the mill volume, the volume that has to be milled. We first have to sketch really the, the part that's uh, the material that's being cut. So we sketch something. I need to sketch a plane. We'll start on the bottom surface. Um, put a rectangle up here. We'll just make this same size as that. If we make it bigger, then we're going to spend time in our machining process, cutting those shapes out. Um, that's fine, I'll extrude that up. And I'll extrude it up to the top surface of this. Okay. Now we're going to do a trim, so this is sort of a subtraction. We're going to, it's giving us some indication here what we're supposed to do. We'll do the trim, select part to trim by. It's, it's saying, yeah, I'll trim by that. I can also select it here, trim by that. Click green arrow, green tick. Okay. We can do done sequence now. And if we want to see what's actually being 
cut, we can hide our part here. And that's the shape that's gonna end up being cut. And again, this is just a volume, a volume mill. And, uh, sorry, it's just a volume rough, so it's gonna leave a very ugly shape, really. Um, I can hide that. And now if I wanna play the path for this volume milling, we should be able to see that path played out. Okay, so you can see our, it comes down from the retract plane, it's dropping down a millimeter at a time. Right. I can speed this up. Okay, great. Close that. Last step here is generating some G code to go back to manufacturing. Save a CL file. We need to select the NC sequence that we're going to do. We'll select the volume mill. We need to select the file. To get G code that's going to be by something like Mach 3, <coughs> we just collect, select these links, compute CL and MCD file. And this is things we figured out by trial and error and watching other YouTube videos. Uh, we need to give it a name. Hemi, vol, rough. Okay, let's select done. It now asks for a bunch of post processors. Each of these is a different post processor. It gives uh, some different standards in how it, code is generated. Most of these earlier ones are G code and they'll run on things like Mach 3. Some of the later ones are not G code. We've just mostly done the first one. For some reason, you have to enter the number here. <coughs> gives you some indication of the tape length and the cycle time. Four minutes for this one. Close that. Done output. And that's it. We're done.